seasons, greetings, whiskey folk, and welcome to the official Dram Association and bottling of the Redbreast 27. Ah, a particularly special whiskey for a particularly special time of year. Do you like, do you like my hat? Uh, it goes all the way around with pins. A uh, special thank you to everyone who's picked up a pin badge for, for me on their travels around Scotland in the last few years. I've got quite the collection going now, and uh, I'll need a bigger hat next year. I've already, I've already got more than this. All right, so... I did promise last month that I would uh, I would be trying two whiskies I've never had before um, and two whiskies I've been really looking forward to. This was the one I mostly had in mind. I've been wanting to try this since it came in and I've been searching for an excuse. Um, I actually had a tasting planned, which unfortunately ended up having to be cancelled. And now, screw it, let's just have it as a drop-in dram. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, so yeah, um, this is free for all premium members uh, to come and try in the store. And I, I just, I must ask, add an asterisk to that. Only premium members who were already premium members before this video went out. You can't become a premium member now and get to try this. This is a, a thank you for the premium members who have been with us throughout the year. Um, uh, that being said, Still, join up if you're not a premium member. It's only $10 a month. You get 10% off all whiskeys in store. And you get to try whiskeys. We don't, you don't get to try this one, but you get to try the next awesome whiskey we get to uh, we get to try together. There's one every month. And yeah, sometimes they'll be next level. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. All right. Let's unbottle it, shall we? I guess we've got to unbox it first. It's quite... Uh, Quite the stunning box this one comes in. I thought I'd give you the whole experience as what it turns up to the store in. <laughs> well, a six pack of these. All right. Guess I don't need that anymore. Let's uh, pop it up in the background. Very nice. And let's see what's hidden under here. <laughs> Isn't that? absolutely gorgeous one of the nicest boxes i've uh, i've come across it's got a nice metal strip along the edge it's just beautiful um yeah beautiful type block along the front the logo in uh, shining gold above it oh you know it's going to be good don't you all right pop that over there and see what the bottle looks like Eey. oh there's there's a hole there's a mechanism to this there's, there's some kind of sliding out thing. It's a trap. There we go. Oh, it's got magnets. Love a magnet. Nice and safe. Ooh. Put that back in. And there's a whole lot more text over here as well. Hmm. I'll read it, shall I? It's like it's like a, a, a Christmas book. Let me. I'll pop this up here so you can see it a little better. And I'll I'll, I'll read from the book of Redbreast. The robin redbreast is the only bird which sings continuously throughout the dark Irish winters, and is one of very few small birds that chose to winter in Ireland. It is this enduring spirit which inspires its namesake, Redbreast Irish Whiskey. Redbreast is regarded by many as the definitive expression of single pot still Irish whiskey. When the world demanded lighter, more accessible whiskey styles, Redbreast stood fast in its belief of the tradition and significance of this style of whiskey. And for the past century, it has remained the standard bearer for single pot still Irish whiskey. Redbreast 27 elevates the storied reputation of this iconic whiskey even further. Building on the celebrated foundation of bourbon and sherry cask influence, this inclusion of ruby port casks brings even more complexity and depth. Nearly three decades in the shaping, this cask strength Redbreast is a joy to behold each and every bottle. And then it goes on to give you tasting notes, which I'm going to try and ignore because uh, I'm going to give you my own tasting notes. All right, pop that there. Ooh, I yeah, I I I, I love Redbreast. Um, I'm always sad that we don't get that many of the the special editions out here, uh, and when we do, they're often um, only at the government stores, unfortunately. But I was so happy when I saw the Redbreast 27 become available. I ordered. Frankly, a lot of it, because I just assumed we weren't supposed to get it. So uh, I, I got it while I could. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I did. It sold really well. We're down to the last few bottles now. So it was now or never in terms of cracking one open. Let's do it, shall we? <laughs> oh, very, very cool. 
This is batch three for those who are uh, interested in the specific batch. It was bottled at 53.1% alcohol and uh, has a particularly tough to get opening. All right, let's try a, a, a longer nail. There we go, I've got it, I've got it now. Even says 27 on the top. And although it says 27, of course, uh, Irish whiskey is uh, follows the same rules as most places, although it worked for age, uh, not necessarily for everything. Irish whiskey actually can use other woods. It doesn't have to be oak, which is weird. Um, this is oak though, don't worry. Um, they, much like every other whiskey pretty much, uh, they can only state the age of the youngest component. And according to uh, to some interviews and some websites, this actually contains a quite a decent amount of 30 year old in there as well. Lovely. Mm. Isn't that gorgeous? I've got the old Crystal Glencairn out for the, the special occasion. It's actually a uh, Victoria Whiskey Festival crystal uh, crystal cut can. Uh, there's still some tickets available right now at uh, strathalica.com if you are looking to go to the festival there's the last few pre-made packages are available on the Dram Association page look at that colour it's hard to tell the colour because it's actually frosted red glass and as you can see a dribble going down <laughs> I'm going to catch that before I reach the label um, it's yeah it's a lovely shade of red the glass I've never seen a red bottle like that for whiskey before red breast red bottle it makes sense doesn't it Although Black Bottle was in green for a long time. Oh, yeah, it's nice. Red Breast is often referred to as the, the, the quintessential Christmas whiskey um, because it is pretty much always uh, quite heavily sherry cask influenced. The addition of port in this one, especially on the nose, is very Christmas reminiscent still as well. Certain, that aspect of Red Breast certainly hasn't gone anywhere. Oh. Nice. Okay, so what am I getting? I'm getting an awful lot of um, stewed fruits, you know, mince pie filling. Um, Christmas pudding, of course, is, is the, the natural one that comes to mind. But it feels like a Christmas pudding that's gone heavy on cranberries this time. Uh, maybe they ran out of raisins and put craisins in there, the, the old ocean spray ones. Um, still fig, still date. Still uh, still very much a plum pudding kind of a base. Mm. Yeah, a little, little touch of the cranberry, I would say. Even raspberry as well. It's, it's interesting because it's such a, a lighter style of base spirit, um, but it takes on so much more of the wood. So you, although it's the whiskey itself is theoretically lighter, you, you get a, a slightly heavier end product in the older versions of Red Breast. I'm, I'm thinking mostly the 21, which is the oldest one I've had before now ah oh, yeah it's it's got a uh not a smokiness but like a um a rusticness i guess uh, for 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 want of a better word hmm i might have to take a look at the tasting notes to be honest because the nose for me is uh, maybe a little bit too much influenced by my preconceived notions of what i expect red breast to be like and it's not the same uh, experience that I've had previously from Red Breast. There's, there's different things going on here, which is nice, it's exciting, it's different. Ooh. Ooh. That is jam. Right on the back palette there. That is strawberry jam on a, on a, on a cookie. Mmm. I went on at length earlier in the year, maybe even last year now, time time keeps on slipping, um, about uh, uh, jammy dodgers. And I actually got them mixed up. When I was in the UK earlier this year, I realized that what I thought was a jammy dodger was actually a smiley face, which is a knockoff jammy dodger. Apparently we didn't have the official jammy dodgers when I was a kid. We had the, the supermarket brand one, which had weird freaky faces on them. Original jammy dodgers just have like a little heart in the middle, <laughs> but same concept. Um, Blonde cookie with cream and jam. Very much getting the, the old jammy dodger on the palate. Mmm. Delightful. Mmm. All right. So a little bit about how this is made, the style. This is a pot still, as the uh, as, as the inside notes of the of the uh, cask uh, cask. I say cask because it's made of wood. Case uh, box, I guess. Um, um, was telling us all about 
What does pot still mean? Well, I mean, first of all, it's made in a pot still, much like a single malt. However, the big difference being that it is not 100% malted barley. It is a mix of malted and unmalted barley, at least 30% of either. So, you know, it's at least 30% malted barley, 70% unmalted, or vice versa, 70% of them. Yeah, you, you get the drift. However, the wild card is that the style does actually allow for up to 5% of another grain entirely. Um, so Kilbegan, for example, I love their pot still. That has oats in it. Um, some have rye, some have wheat, some, some you know, it, doesn't, it can be anything. Redbreast chooses to not bother. Uh, this, From what I understand, this is 100% barley, a mix of malted and unmalted, and it's a closely kept secret as to what the ratio is that they use for Redbreast. So Redbreast started out, I've got the year here because I'm terrible at remembering years, um, in uh, 1912 is the, is the, I think, earliest mention of Redbreast as a brand. It came from uh, Gilby's or Ghibli, I, I can't read, my, I don't have my glasses on because they reflect the light too much, but I think it's Gilby's, maybe Ghibli's, anyway, um, which was a, a merchant's, um, a liquor importer of merchants in Dublin at the time, and uh, they bought uh, New Make Spirit from the Bow Street Distillery, which is where Jameson's made, or was made, and uh, they put it into their own casks. And because they were a spirit merchant and they were importing things from all over the world, they had decent access to sherry casks, and that's what they used. Um, so it was a more heavily sherried version of the distillate that you could get from Bow Street. Um, and they did this for a very, very long time. In fact, all the way up to Bow Street's closing and the opening of the new Middleton Distillery uh, in 1971, which is when uh, it kind of all consolidated together. Um, and uh, they, they kept making the Red Breast at the new distillery until finally in 1985, Irish distillers, which owned New Middleton and still does, uh, bought out the rights to Red Breast. So they just make it all in-house now. It's nothing to do with Gilby's or Ghibli's or whatever the... I still can't tell. <laughs> I need to get contact lenses. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, they're out of the picture now. It's all 100% made um, at New Middleton by Irish distillers. This particular expression. Very special. It was released in 2020. It's really hard to find. They don't make much of it. It is part of the official core lineup, so they say now, but it's, yeah, I mean, <laughs> good, good luck finding it in most places. Uh, we're very lucky here at this draft that we got as much as we did. Um, and the price, it seems wildly all over the place. I mean, even here within Canada, the price is uh, fluctuates within, you know, almost $400. I've seen it, I actually saw it in one place in Alberta for over a thousand. Um, we've got it right now on the shelf at six ninety five fifty seven. And yes, of course, we, we are giving you 10% off because uh, if, if you're not a premium member and you really want to try this, actually, um, you can still buy a bottle and you can still get it at 10% off. That 10% off is available to all membership levels uh, right now. And it makes it 626.01, which is fantastic. All right. Why is this also particularly special? Because this has won so many awards and perhaps the most important and the most prominent um, and this is information thanks to Forbes magazine who went into great detail about this particular uh, award that it got. So BTI, which is the uh, the Beverage Tasting Institute in America, uh, they're kind of a industry sort of watchdog in a sense almost, uh, making sure things are of decent quality and everything. Um, they became really uh, famous after, in 1997, they scored a, a relatively unknown whiskey at the time, 99 points. That was Pappy Van Winkle, a 20-year-old version. They scored it 99, and, well, have you tried to find a Pappy these days? <laughs> yeah, um, that happened. Uh, so 99 points is a, is a hell of a score. The only other, there's not many other whiskies, uh, only 13 other spirits have actually got it, or I think... 13 whiskies, maybe, and that be some other spirits. They do award, you know, tequilas and mezcals and rums and all kinds of things. Um, but Macallum 30 is one of them, and the Dalmore 1974 is another one that got 99 points. This didn't get 99. I'm sorry, it didn't didn't quite make the same as the Pappy Van Winkle 20. This got 100. This got a perfect 100 out of 100 score from BTI. Only five people have been awarded that score. The only other notable whiskey is Cavalan, um, interestingly enough. Yeah, a solid 100 points. This is apparently a perfect whiskey, according to the BTI, which is awesome. And it is a bloody good whiskey, I have to say. I'm thoroughly enjoying this so far. I'll, I'll take a peek back into, the, uh, back into the case here and see 
what other things they say we should be able to find on the palate and then on the nose. They say, oh, yeah, see, tropical fruit. That's not something I'm used to looking for in a red breast. Mango, pineapple, blood orange. Yeah, okay. I was getting some kind of orange, but yeah, blood orange specifically. Wood spices, vanilla, treacle, toffee, walnuts, toasted oak. Yeah, that all makes sense. Taste incredibly rich in texture with luxuriously fruity introduction. Ripe, red-fleshed plums, black cherries, and summer berries. Hey, I see summer berries. That's getting there. Uh, balanced in with the prickle and uh, heat of a chili oil. Oh, yeah, okay. I could see that. Has a... Well, as soon as you said chili oil, I'm starting to think of things that go with chili oil. A little hint of sesame for me as well. Cinnamon, vanilla, sweet spices, red pepper, nutmeg, toasted oak. Yeah, this is a winner. This is truly an incredible whiskey. I'm glad I managed to find an excuse to crack one open before we sell out. And yeah, if you're looking for a great way to, to toast the season, to ring in the new year or something, pick a bottle of this up. Um, yeah, and if you're a premium member, don't forget to swing by the Strath and get your free dram. Um, yeah. Even if you're not usually a fan of Irish whiskey, you need to try this. You really do. This is something else. This is top-notch, next-level stuff. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful, uh, silly season. I'll see you in the new year. Actually, I'll see, hopefully, many of you at the Victoria Whiskey Festival. <laughs> All right. Slanchevar, take care. I'll see you in the next one.